as an introduction to the process of integrated design, we will look at the concepts of sustainable design. Today we are faced with the importance of realizing the limitations of resource availability, the sensitivity of the environment and the satisfaction requirements of building occupants. These are the primary concepts of sustainability. The concepts of sustainable design impact every facet of a project's design and construction. From the initial site analysis and selection through the programming phase, goal setting, design, construction, and well into the actual occupancy and operation of the building. These concepts are an integral part of the entire facility's life. While the concepts have a wide range of application for a project, the basic tenets of this philosophy can be summarized in just a few generalized ideas. Let's itemize them. First, develop a site to minimize the impact of intrusion. There are three potential solutions that relate to the site development required for a project. Leave the site alone as it currently relates to its original environmental condition. In other words, reuse a site that was already previously developed. Sites that are still natural green belts or landscaped are becoming scarce as the human population continues to expand and converts these sites to become built environments. If the project option presents itself with a choice of reuse of an existing site versus constructing an undeveloped land, consider carefully the use of the previously developed site. Do as little to the site's environment during the development to minimize further damage to the natural conditions. Pay attention to the existing site constraints, such as contours, plant materials, and solar and wind patterns. While designing the structures proposed for the site's use, consider placing these structures to take advantage of the existing conditions as possible or restore a damaged site's environmental conditions to make it better than when the project started. Sites that have had previous history of building occupancy typically have many of the needed infrastructures existing that can be reused. Although these systems may or may not be fully adequate for the proposed development, they are the beginnings of systems that can prevent complete new installations. Additionally, depending on the age of the historical use, there may be requirements for remediation of hazardous materials left on the site. The second tenet is, design the building project to be as energy efficient and environmentally friendly as affordable. Here are a couple of ideas to apply to meet this philosophy. Use as little energy as possible and still meet the human comfort factors of an occupied building. There are a wide variety of studies in print that indicate the built environment accounts for anywhere from 40% to 70% of available electrical power use. Reductions in this use will benefit this range of values regardless of which study you accept. This could include the use of daylighting with natural light, ventilation from available trade winds, energy sources that are renewable and possibly installation of a super insulated building shell to help reduce energy demands of the building. Each of these possibilities has as a result a lowered fossil fuel energy requirement due to lowered heat loads, reduced cooling loads, better thermal break from climate conditions, etc. Use materials that are environmentally friendly in the building construction. This includes materials that are harvested and or fabricated in a manner that doesn't harm the environment. Materials that make use of byproducts or waste from other products, or products that contain recycled content as a resource for fabrication. It should also include materials that are produced locally, regionally, instead of from long distance sources. Materials that are harvested, fabricated, and or manufactured in distant locations may or may not be sustainably created, but they require the use of energy to transport these products to the project site, known as embodied energy, energy that can be saved through the use of local regional materials and, although we won't address it as part of this course, water use is another natural resource that currently presents a challenge. Maintaining potable water supplies for all inhabitants of any specific country or even the world as a whole is already becoming difficult to achieve. Conservation methods relating to use by the built environment, management of natural rainfall and stormwater control, and a resupply of our water resources are all critical to the survival of our planet.